Here's our last example of the work required to pump water out of a tank. And we're going to use the things we've built to this point. And this one will be very similar with just a few small changes. This tank is shaped like a triangle, like a trough. And if you look at it from the end, you see a picture like this where the shape is triangular. And it's not an equilateral triangle but the height of the triangle and the width of it are the same. So the dimensions may not be quite drawn to scale, but you get the idea. This thing is full to the brim with water to begin with, and we want to calculate the work required to pump it all out of the edge of this spout. So notice we're going to pump it up to the top of the tank, and then also this extra distance out through this spout at the top. So we're going to start by slicing this, but before we do that, we need to place our origin. And again, we can place it at the top or the bottom of the tank. We could also place it maybe at the top of the spout, but any one of these will work just fine. However, as we've done in the last couple examples, I'm going to choose the bottom of the tank as the origin, just because it makes the geometry slightly simpler as we've seen before when you do that linear relationship between your dimensions and x. It kind of saves a little bit of work. So when we cut a slice, hopefully you can see that a slice will be a rectangular plate, very similar to the last example. Again, the thickness will be delta x. This time though, the length, the long side, is the consistent one. No matter where we cut those slices, they're always eight meters long. It's the width that will be changing, this shorter side. At the top of the tank, that width would be three meters. At the bottom of the tank, that width would be zero meters. And again, hopefully that's clear after having done, done a few of these, that at the bottom of the tank, when x is zero, that width would be zero. At the top of the tank, that width would be three meters. So we can use that to find this relationship. Remember the width is going to depend on x, and it's going to depend linearly on x, just like the others, because those sides are increasing at a linear rate. The two points we know are that when x equals zero at the bottom of the tank, width equals zero. When x equals 3 at the top of the tank, width also equals 3. And again, if we placed the origin at the top of the tank, we would have 0, 3, and 3, 0 instead, but the general approach would be basically the same. Again, because we've done this carefully, the intercept will just be 0, so b is 0, and then the slope is change in w over the change in x. The difference between those w values is 3, and so is the difference between the x values. So really simply, width just equals x at this point. So in other words, if we cut a slice 1 meter above the bottom of the tank, the width would be 1 meter, and so on. So this one's pretty simple. We can move on then to finding the force on one slice. Again, that will be the unit weight, in this case 9800, times the volume. With these rectangular shapes, the volume is length times width times height. The length is a constant 8, the width is just x, and the height delta x. So that's it for force. And then for the distance, Again, if we're starting with x at the bottom of the tank, we're trying to lift this all the way to the top of the spout. So if our slice is here, and this distance is x, the total distance we want to travel from the bottom of the tank is 5 meters. 3 meters to get to the top of the tank, and the extra 2 meters to get up into the top of this spout. So if the total is 5, the difference between that 
and the x that we've already traveled from the bottom of the tank must be 5 minus x. So we've seen that a couple times now and that pattern starts to emerge. Hopefully it's pretty clear at this point that if we're trying to move a total distance of 5 and we've already measured x up from the bottom of the tank, the remaining distance is the difference between that and the 5, so 5 minus x. So distance is just 5 minus x. And then for work, we will multiply these two and integrate. So work will be the integral of 9800 times 8 times x. Then we'll insert the 5 minus x for distance, keep the delta x at the end, and call it dx now because we're integrating. And all we need is the limits of integration now. Those are pretty simple. The water starts when x equals 0, and the water finishes when x equals 3, when you get to the top of that triangular tank. So the limits are from 0 to 3. Again, as always, we can pull out these constants. We can distribute an x. And the integral is a very simple one that I won't take the time to do, because I trust you can do that by this point. But what you should get at the end is just over a million joules. Again, a huge number because water is really heavy and pumping it takes a lot of work. And this is also a pretty large tank. So again, you should go through and make sure you can do these examples on your own and try doing them with the origin at different places and see if you can consistently build the problem up and get the correct answer with different values.